Welcome back. If you just joined us, we've been looking at the overlapping challenge in the Nigerian Immigration Service due to the 2014 recruitment stampede in the Nigerian Immigration Service and also the several reforms going on in the Nigerian Immigration Service. And our guest on this episode of Question Time has been the Controller General of Immigration, Mohamed Babandidi Dungwewe. Just how prepared are you ready to fight this battle to a finish line? Because we understand that some immigration officials go as far as lobbying top government officials to influence juicy posting and transfers. Yes, I have received many calls since I came on board. And uh, I told those big men who called me, I said, look, passport office will no longer be attractive. I, I'm glad to tell you, go and ask in places like Lagos. Some people are saying, let me just leave passport office. The wahala in passport office is already too much. I would like to make passport offices and the so-called juicy places unattractive. That is how best to do it. Once there is no uh, easy money, you should be ready to work everywhere in immigration. Uh, my interest is to see that I encourage those who have done well and punish those who commit offense. So go and lobby. And when you lobby, I told them, go and lobby. I'll put it in your file. Now let's have an in-depth understanding of these problems because uh, one wonder why you have to wait till you become the CG before implementing most of these reforms. Is it systemic? Well, I have. When I was a deputy control general, nobody comes to my office with the money. Officers know me very well. You can ask. Uh, I was deputy control general in charge of operation and passport. Junior officers will not carry money to come to me to issue passport. We, I don't sell booklets. So you don't just start to be a good man one day. <laughs> you need to start being a good man throughout your career. Uh, I'm glad that I have become a controller general at a time when there is the protection of government. The will is there. Uh, uh, anybody who wants to fight corruption at the time of President Mohamed Bahari, he's very lucky. <laughs> you, the environment is conducive. The environment is excellent for me to fight this war. What are you doing about reported cases of missing booklets of passports? It happened during my predecessor, but I have summoned the officer, I have collected the records, and he will be punished, the officer involved. But it's not enough to punish. I want to know where the missing booklets are. Uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, these booklets are not empty. They have been issued and they are missing. But we want to know what is happening. I assure you that I will not be able to hide things because it's a public issue. Uh, we will be transparent. Uh, if it was before, we could have told you, oh, there is no story of missing booklet, but I don't like to walk like this. I will tell you there is a missing booklet. And what I'm doing is to solve the problem. I want to know the source, and I'll punish those who are responsible. What are you doing to ensure compliance to the 72-hour directive in the passport processing? We, luckily, I have uh, right in my office. This has not happened before. Uh, right in my office, I, have, I can monitor. I can monitor what is happening. Unlike the previous times, you, you wait and see. I have a monitor. I want to see level of activities in the password office, not only in Nigeria, but abroad. Uh, Nigerians have the right because we create opportunity for them to complain. When you submit your password for issue, if it is not done, you have the right to complain. Uh, I told you the 78 hours was our old target. It's a target we're achieving in the last two years, but we drill and it becomes many years, many, many days. If I achieve this target this year, 78 hours, I would like to go down next year. Uh, I would like to go down next year so that I can be able to deliver a passport in 48 hours. That's my target. It can take a year to achieve, but I would like to be there. Tell us about the introduction of the new passport renewal system. The new renewal system, first, for women. Uh, they can go to their state of origin, apply with the documents required for change of name, uh, marriage papers, an affidavit in court, and newspaper publication. The data page of your husband is important so that we know that that is the identity of your husband, where you are taken. Submit it to the passport officer. He will seek approval from his controller of the state command. He will capture you and you will be given passport due to change of name, and you will not pay extra fee as a woman. Unlike the fees being paid by others who want to change their name. Uh, you say, my name is Benga, I want it to be Benga Sa, together. You know, okay, bring it. What are the reasons you to swear an affidavit that that is the best for you? You pay fees additional, 30,000, excluding back charges. 
and is done. So it will be like this from the command. The case of lost passport will start in the next few weeks. I promise Nigerian two months is not yet over. Uh, lost cases will require an, a police report, an affidavit, a newspaper publication. Then you can apply handwriting telling us what happened to your passport. We need to document it. If later we found out that you didn't lose your passport, you did it for criminal intent, we charge you to court. In terms of human relations at the passport office, what are you doing to ensure improvement in this area? Uh, we are lucky. Uh, immediately I came on board, there was a report from Sabicom. And Sabicom's intention is to improve services agencies like us give to the public. Uh, we scored 48%, uh, 47% in many passport offices uh, due to many reasons. Some of them are related to infrastructure. For example, we don't have a good waiting area for customers. Some of them, we don't have enough information for customers. Some of the problems are just human relations by our officers. Some of them we can solve without resources. For example, I've just briefed the officers that you need to be courteous to all passport applicants. You need to issue them whatever they want in good time. If you can't, due to technical reason, explain that you cannot. If people apply to you, you cannot, there is a query. Get back to them, otherwise they won't know. You apply for a, a, a service, you cannot get the service, you need to get a reply. Uh, by doing this, I think we'll improve customer relationship. I have also taxed them that Sabicom will assist me to do a report on each of the password offices, including our commands who issues other services, so that I can have a rating for performance annually. I will know the best password office in 2016. I will know the worst passport office. And I promise them, it's not only reward that I will give by giving you a plaque or a, an award, but it will be documented in your file, in your record. If you do very badly, I will also document in your file. So I think service will improve if they know that we can watch them uh, with the effective monitoring system, uh, with the reward system, with the punishment system, and with an independent body that will monitor what we do. I think we'll do better in the future. Let's digress a bit now to happenings in the Niger Delta. You announced recently that um, one of the problems filling this agitation was the abuse of the expatriate quota system in, among companies in the Niger Delta. So what are you doing to regularize this issue in the Niger Delta? Yeah, I think I, first I'd like to seize this opportunity to talk to all those who are protesting in the Niger Delta for one reason or another that even immigration is up, that they may see as not relevant that because we're not working in the oil company, or we're not, we're not determining many things, we can contribute to peace and stability in Niger Delta. One of the areas of contention by people in the Niger Delta is the job being taken by expatriate. Uh, I assure you that in immigration regime we run now, expatriate quotas are given to companies to provide services that are not available in Nigeria. The Minister of Interior under the present minister wants to ensure, because they give a quota, the ministry gives a patrol quota. I, I, I had him, he has set a committee to ensure that expatriate quotas are given to companies that are really existence. Otherwise, if you have, there are companies that have just briefcase. They get expatriate quota and they sell the slot. The minister said he make sure that expatriate quotas are given to companies that deserve it. But the most important is monitoring on our side. Our duty to ensure the monitoring and effective utilization. If you are given an expatriate quota, you have 10 engineers. I want to make sure those 10 engineers are really engineers. They are not laborers. If I do that, things will change for labor market in Nigeria. Also, the expatriate quota regime says that if every expatriate is employed by your company, you need two Nigerian understudies. If we would pursue this idea of understudy, where every one expatriate will be with two Nigerians, don't you think we will change the way how Niger Delta works? We will provide job. But for this to happen, we need peace and stability in the Niger Delta. Uh, with the oil spill will not help the problem. War will not solve the problem. No tension. If there is peace and stability, I assure you, I have spoken with the Minister of Niger Delta, and I will get to the governors and the Niger Delta. You may also join in this conversation by sending your comment on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time. What is the Nigerian Immigration Service doing to improve border security?